Hi, let's look at uh, how we can create instances in Jarvis Labs. There are primarily two ways. One is our template based approach. The other one is virtual machine based approach. When you log into Jarvis Labs for the first time, you can see both the templates and virtual machines. For most of the users, templates is a good option. It comes up with JupyterLab VS Code SSH access to the instances. Once you choose a template, so there are multiple templates available here, PyTorch, FastA, Automatic, Axel, Autel, Comfue. For most of the users, PyTorch is a good place to start. If there is something which you don't find, you can always install it. We'll show you how to do that. Choose PyTorch framework, choose a particular GPU type. I'm choosing A5000 Pro uh, and go and click on the launch instance. So once the instance is created, let's go and access it to JupyterLab. If you don't see the SSH button here, that means you have not added your SSH key in the settings section, which you can go here and click on this and add it. Once you're added, you have to create a new instance for the in instance to have such access. Let's go to the JupyterLab and let's do some verification steps. Uh, for example, let's click on verify a setup. Let's run this. This basically checks if we have NVIDIA GPU or not. So in this case, we can see we have an A5000 GPU. We have 0% utilization. And how many cores we have, CPU cores, what torch version we have. The CPU cores we have here is of the host, not of the container that we are using. The template is actually running on a container. So once we are done with this, uh, so base, the template comes up with certain default versions for Torch and other things, but sometimes you may want a different version of Python or uh, different Torch version or different libraries to install that we are not providing by default. So one good way to do it is create a new environment for yourself. We use a library called UV, which is really fast. Open a terminal. Yeah, okay. by default, the template comes with 3.10, but now I want to have a version with 3.12. So I'm saying that create me a new environment, which uses 3.12. Okay, and I'm activating this. Once I've activated it, I need to install a couple of things. For example, I want the new version also to have Torch and other things. I want it to be from uh, CUDA 12.8. The way you can get this URL is go to PyTorch website. Click on the get started. And here, click on Linux, Python, CUDA 12.8. We are using 12.8 at this point of time, which you can find it here by saying NVIDIA hyphen SMI. You can see that it's 12.8. Now let's go and install this Torch library. Since we're using UV, it installation is going to be super fast. Once we are done with that, let's also install uh, another library called IPy kernel, which lets you have a notebook for this particular environment. For example, when we go here, we just see the default one. We don't see a kernel that is activated for the particular environment. So let's wait for this to get installed. So we have the things we have Torch installed, so we're installing the IPEC kernel. It'll take another few seconds. Okay, it's done. So if you go to the launcher, we'll not see this. So we have to refresh this page once and again open on the launcher. Now we can see the, we have 3.12, okay. So 
So we have a new uh, environment. So what the advantage of this environment is, whatever we install here would remain when you pass and resume the instance. The reason for that is there are two uh, important places where you can store your data. One is slash home, which is persistent, and the other one is the normal slash, which is root, which is not persistent. So I recommend you to store all the data under slash home by putting the environment using UV or any of your favorite environment management tool. You're making the environment consistent when you pass and resume the instance, which is very important if you are setting up a lot of things. Now we are done with that. Let's try to go and run an LLM model. To run an LLM model, we need another set of few set of libraries. So let's go and install them. Go to the terminal again. Since the environment is active here, I'm not activating it. So installation is done. It was super fast. So now we can select this entire code. We have this from Python 3.12, which uses our environment. This is restarted, so it has access to all the libraries we installed. So what this is going to do is it's going to download one of the latest AI models from Quinn. It's going to load it as FB16. And it's going to try to tell us our two jokes. So it's downloading the models, which could take a few minutes depending on the size of the model and depending on the download speech. Okay, we are all good. So we have got two jokes. If you're interested, probably you can read the jokes. Let's also look at what else we can do. Another important thing that we want to do is we want to uh, share uh, an app like Gradio or Streamlit or even run something like Fast API, processing some requests from the users. One of the easy way to do it is uh, using the API endpoint that we see on the dashboard here. Okay, if you click this, you don't get anything. It just directs to a Cloudflare URL, right? So let's run something uh, like a Gradio app. So let's install Gradio since it's not available in the new environment that we have. We are already in mine, so let's record this. Sorry, let's install this. And let's copy this one, and let's open a new notebook. We don't need a notebook for this, but let's we can run a notebook also. So this is running in 0.0.0606, okay? The server port has to be 606 because that is open and it is mapped to the URL that we see here. Once we see this is running, we can just refresh here and we have the Gradio app up and running. Except that it's taking a few seconds to load, okay? Oh, I can say something like hi. It's going to just return the GPU type that we are using, right? You can have a, any complicated or advanced apps like Streamlit or even Gradio. Anything that you see in Hugging Face Spaces, you can just bring it here and run it. And if you don't want this to be uh, shared with others, you can disable this. This is useful when you don't have this API endpoint. You can remove this and run. You can also add an authentication for an extra layer of security for your URL. Hey, thanks for watching.